It is nice to have the jingling of the Rimonim uh, as the Torah goes around again. That is a, uh, a very beautiful sound to have in the sanctuary once more. Much better than fireworks in my opinion, but you know, we all have our personal preferences. That's not to say I don't like the 4th of July, it's actually uh, one of my favorite holidays. But before we get into precisely about the 4th of July, we have to do a little compare and contrast. You always used to love those assignments in elementary school, right? Well, we need to do a little bit on this as well. So 4th of July, we'll come back to, but um, if you were living in France, what day do you celebrate as an Independence Day? The Bastille Day, the Bastille Day, which commemorates what? the revolution of 1789 against uh, the French monarchy and the overthrow, uh, which overthrew and then got a little out of hand, but that's their story, not ours. If you were living in Mexico, what is Independence Day? Uh, September 16th is Mexico's Independence Day, not Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo is actually not commemorated all that much in Mexico itself. It is a, a, a commemoration of a victory over uh, French forces. There's France again uh, in the, uh, what is it, the, uh, the 1860s. Uh, it is not their Independence Day from, from Spain. That is celebrated on September 16th from 1810. And that is a huge deal in Mexico. That is a, a much, 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 much bigger holiday than Cinco de Mayo, uh, much like the 4th of July is for us. Uh, and uh, that began with uh, the Father Hidalgo's famous speech, the cry of Dolores, uh, that, that is their, uh, their Independence Day. So both of those are the beginning of their, their, their fights for independence, either from the colonial power of Spain or from the oppression of the monarchy of France. When was our day for that then? What is the equivalent day of Bastille Day or September 16th in Mexico Independence Day? What is the equivalent day in America? April 19th, 1775 not July 4th, 1776. What happened on April 19th, 1970, uh, sorry, 1775? <laughs> Got to get the right century here. Uh, of course, I know, yes, that I get to ask questions that I know the answer to, otherwise how can I actually check if you're right? I also happen to know because April 19th happens to be my birthday, but not 1775, I'm not that old. Despite, despite the gray. <laughs> That's why I wear the mask now. It hides the gray in my beard. Lexington and Concord, Massachusetts, the Minutemen ride out, Paul Revere's famous ride, right? 18th of April in 75, hardly a man is now alive, remembers a famous day and year, the midnight ride of Paul Revere. We all had to learn that at some point, I'm sure. Right? That was the beginning of the fighting as a formal, 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 because we'd had lots of little skirmishy things before, but the formal, formal, formal beginning of the war for American independence was April 19th, 1775. So where does July 4th come in? The reading of the Declaration of Independence. Oh, wait a minute. It's more than a year later, and that's when we're celebrating our Independence Day? Most other countries celebrate their Independence Days at the beginning of a conflict or at the end of a conflict, either when they start fighting or when they have finished fighting, or if there hasn't been a fight involved, which has not been that many places, it's whenever the treaty or the, the, the agreement has been reached that allows for the establishment of their country. We in the United States on July 4th we don't do it that way. We don't do it either at the beginning of the Revolutionary War or at the end of the Revolutionary War. We do it kind of weirdly a year and a bit in to our fighting. We, 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 what were we fighting for then with the rifles and muskets at the Bridge of Concord? Israel does it the same way. We're gonna come back to Israel in just a second. I wanna, I wanna put that in in its proper place in the order, but I need to figure out America first, because you know we do live here. Uh, and after all, tomorrow is the day we're celebrating. So 
Does that mean that it wasn't until July 4th, 1776 that we knew what we were fighting for? That the battles that had taken place in that previous year, uh, most of which we lost, that we weren't sure why we were fighting? We weren't sure what we were doing? Was it just a scuffle about taxation? Was it just a, uh, a, a revolt of people who were unhappy with the uh, taxation without representation or the, uh, the various proclamations of the British that we didn't enjoy? Were we not trying to seek independence before that? What were we trying to achieve before that? And as a matter of fact, that is why July 4th ends up being the day that is special. Because it is the day when we clarified what all this meant. Because there was, for the first year, many people within America who would have been perfectly happy if the fighting up to that point resolved itself into a continued, more equal standing within British uh, society, to continue as a colony but part of the British Commonwealth, and to have more rights, but not to be truly independent. July 4th, 1776 was the moment where we said, no, we're out of here. We're not fighting for a change of policy. We're not fighting against some of the different crimes the British Crown, uh, well, Parliament has committed against us. We are fighting to actually be separate, independent, and free because inside the British system of government at that point, it's changed since then, don't hold it against them, but at that point, the individual did not have the full capacity to achieve freedom that America was proclaiming it wanted in the Declaration of Independence. America set as its ideal, an ideal that it's taken a long time to meet and that we still have trouble with sometimes, that freedom was what we were fighting for. The individual as an individual, not as a subject of the crown, not as an inheritor of some legacy of, of, of history, but the individual free and clear, choosing to be part of a nation and building it from scratch with rights, liberties, and protections built around the individual first and foremost, that was established as the true cause that we were fighting for on July 4th. Prior to that, it could have been all over if we had just gotten a couple deals, at least theoretically. After that, nothing short of independence to allow us to exercise these rights that we have now proclaimed on the Declaration as our desire, nothing short of independence would be satisfying. So, Harry brought up the very good question, but what about Israel? What is Israel's Independence Day? The fifth of ER. I, I know it's Yom Ha'atzma'ut, but it keeps changing around on the calendar. Not if you remember the Hebrew calendar, the fifth of ER, which happens to also be my birthday. Uh, it's very, very easy for me to remember these. Uh, yeah, it's, that's because, you know, they keep changing back and forth between the solar and lunar uh, overlap. So the fifth of ER. And the fifth of ER does not celebrate the start of the fight in Israel. That happened on the sixth of ER, more or less. On the 5th of ER, Israel, like America, signed its Declaration of Independence. It signed a beautiful document, uh, much longer than our Declaration of Independence and much more detailed than our Declaration of Independence and much more legally binding than our Declaration of Independence. It signed its Declaration of Independence as having been established formally with the permission of the United Nations. The next day, it got attacked and it would have to fight the War of Independence for quite a few months and then of course it continued to go through violent uh, upheavals over and over again. But Israel, like America, chose the day when it established its principles as the day for when it would truly celebrate being who it was. Not just the day when it started fighting, not just the day when it stopped fighting, but the day when it clarified what it meant to be part of that country. So what is the Jewish Independence Day? 25th of Kislev, the Hanukkah revolt? Meh. What's that? The 14th and into 15th of Nisan, which is otherwise known as Pesach, Passover. That is our Independence Day in the Jewish faith. All right, the 5th of ER is of course very new and Israeli in particular, although we all can take pride and joy on that day. But Pesach, Pesach was not the beginning of our fight. Pesach was not the end of our fight. 
What did we do on Pesach? What was our proclamation? What was our declaration? Free, that we are free. Even though we were still slaves, never forget that when we celebrated that first Pesach in the land of Egypt, Egypt had not said you can go yet. We were celebrating the concept of freedom that we had the right to be free even though Pharaoh said no. And that was revolutionary. To say that you have the right to be free, that God said you can be free even if the guy who's actually got the army said no, and that you trusted God more than you trusted the guy with the army, that is incredible. That is transformational. That put freedom on the map, not only for us, but for the world. And it put those who would deny freedom on notice. That now we would not just, you know, go along with whatever the person with the army had to say, but that we were willing to declare our right to be free regardless of what they were doing. And it is that spirit of independence that would eventually inspire independence movements around the world and struggles for more rights and freedoms and liberty around the world. Not only among Jews, although of course we clung to this idea in all of our most desperate times and still proclaimed our right to be free even when freedom was taken away from us, but people around the world have been inspired by that as well, just as they have been inspired by the Declaration of Independence from the United States. So it's not always the case that governments get things right. We know this, right? That's because the government's made up of us, of, of human beings, and we often make mistakes. But when we as Jews consider the 4th of July and how we should celebrate it, should we celebrate it purely as good American citizens, or should we celebrate it as both good American citizens as well as proud parents seeing a great, 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 great grandchild of our own independence movement from Egypt, I definitely think we should do the latter. Celebrate it as Americans, but celebrate it also as Jews, as one of the steps forward towards redemption, not only for us, although God knows America has been a blessing for us, but a step forward in redemption for all people for the freedom that was promised on our Independence Day 3,000 years ago on Pesach is a freedom that is promised and given to all on earth. And America has done a lot to move that forward, has a lot more to continue to do, and we as Jews are there as part of the vanguard saying, indeed, we told you, you have the right to be free. Shabbat Shalom and happy 4th of July.